What's up guys, welcome to the Stats Free Sports channel. Here to bring you another video of the Stark Bench Cut series. It is on De'Aaron Fox versus Donovan Mitchell versus Trey Young. Now let's talk about it. So, before we get started guys, today's my birthday. July 19th, today is your boy's birthday. So if you want to, if you really, if you really want to, you can put it in the comment section down below. Happy birthday. But also, put in the comment section down below, who would you start bench cut? De'Aaron Fox, Donovan Mitchell, and or Trey Young. But before we start, I also want to go down a quick story of why this video didn't come out yesterday. And it does, it's not a tangent or nothing like that. It does involve these players and all that stuff. So, uh, first, I teased this video on my personal Instagram account, or oh, my personal social media. It was on Twitter and Facebook also. Um, and basically, soon the thumbnail came out, the same thumbnail that you're seeing today. Basically, all my people I hit up in the comment section, oh, hit me up in the comment section to talk about my videos and stuff like that. They hit me up immediately saying, Trey doesn't really fit here. Trey will be cut. This is kind of easy. You know, you might want to swap Trey out for, you know, the name players like SGA, Kyrie, Jamal Murray. Uh, I, and I disagreed. I, I fought for it. So, it's supposed to come out yesterday, the 18th, about around 1 p.m. Uh, my tease is the 17th, but... I kind of like, uh, I had to debate with myself, like, do they make any sense? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I don't think Kyrie fits this group. I don't think Jamal Murray fits this group. I don't think SGA fits this group either. You know, I think Murray and Kyrie are on different levels. SGA is there, but I think he's got a little bit more to go before he gets to this actual group. For me personally, uh, when I do these videos, I try to do guys who are in similar stature. You know, I think Trey Young, Mitchell, and Fox are kind of in the same group. SGA is right there to me, but he's not quite there yet. So uh, I definitely get it, you know, uh, how Trey is viewed. But I'm not going to lie to you, and I'm going to go ahead and spoil it now. Trey is not going to be cut for, for me. I, I, don't, I don't have Trey being cut. Uh, I actually have Trey being the starter, and let's talk about it. Trey Young, to me, is one of the most underrated players in today's NBA. Uh, we've seen him go to the East Conference Finals, and I know everyone was hurt that year. Uh, he was on fire, all that stuff. Cool. But I really, truly think Trey needs – Trey's a star that needs the most help. Um, I've been a big proponent of John Collins being trash as far as helping the playoff team. You know, I know he's going now, but – they didn't really do a good job of replacing him yet. They brought in DeJounte Murray, a move I predicted the, the, the year, the, matter of fact, the day it happened. The day DeJounte Murray got traded to the Hawks two years ago, two, two summers ago, or last summer, whatever, I did a video the same day, but probably like 10 hours earlier, saying they need DeJounte Murray. I want to see Trey Young off ball, right? And the thing is, the experiment didn't quite work out like I thought. You know, uh, Trey played off ball, but it wasn't great. You know, Trey Young's three points uh, percentage kind of left him a little bit. The last couple of years kind of going down a little bit. But, you know, as far as the team goes, the team still isn't built right for me to help Trey out the, the uh, most. You know, so that's why I've really been pushing for the Pascal Siakam trade to the Hawks. I'm not a Hawks fan, I'm not a Trey fan, but I do think Trey has some good ball, some good play in him. You know, it will, not a good play. He's been playing well. His numbers are all are pretty well. But as far as just him winning, the, the the winning style play of Trey Young isn't quite there. You know, the way he plays now, you know, isn't there. But I think it's also the teammates too. You got Bogdan around him. You got Clint Capella around him. You know, and those guys aren't bad. And but there aren't some of those guys, the uh DeAndre Hunter, you know, some of these guys aren't ready or at least fitting what the Hawks need to pair with Trey Young. I, I think more off-ball Trey is, is needed. You have Murray, Trey for Pascal. I think we'll see a different Trey Young than we've ever seen. You know, a more dangerous one that picked his spot a little bit better. You know, and as far as numbers go for all, all three of these guys, the numbers are pretty much the pretty much the same. You know, the biggest scorer out of the bunch is Donovan Mitchell. He also has the most accolades in like four uh, all-star for all star game, uh, for all star, uh, all star game uh, appearances, um, also the, the best scorer in this group as far as average goes, but he fails in comparison to assist, 
and also the, the rebounds to De'Aaron Fox and also um, Trey Young. You know, so numbers don't really matter here. It's really about how you see the, the, the play style of, of these guys and what you see from them in the future of this upcoming season. And I really just think, like, man, if, if you get Trey the right teammates, I think Trey can take a, a step further. You know, and I'm, I'm not saying the NBA Finals are like that, but I just think the, team, the Hawks will be more competitive. It'll be a different look. It'll be a more aggressive team. You know, I've seen Trey Young the last couple of years in, in his playoffs appearances. You know, when he when he's having a drought, when he's having a, a tough time trying to score, he is smaller, you know, and, and teams can game plan for him. I've seen him pass the ball to Bogdan, to other guys, to Collins, and they just can't get it done. They just can't get it done. So bring in Pascal, bring in Murray, and I think we see a different Trey Young. So Trey Young is my starter here. Number two, uh, the the bench is going to be tough, but I think it has to be said. I think the Aaron Fox is the guy. I really do. So that that means for me, bench the Aaron Fox and um, cutting in general is going to be cutting off the team. Gonna be down to Mitchell, and uh, it's, it's tough. I like Mitchell a lot, but I just don't trust him. I just don't trust him. You know, he's had better teammates than Trey, in my opinion, especially last year. That Cavs team looked very, very good. They were very impressive throughout the regular season. I love Mobley. I like Allen. Uh, I like, I love the, uh, Dar- 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 Darius Garland. When he came out of college, I loved him. Loved him for the Cavs. And last year, they all laid the egg. All of them. You know, M- Mitchell was probably played the, the best, but Garland was cool. You know, Allen was cool, Mobley was cool, but they just laid an egg. Was the lights too bright for real? Were they not physical enough? I'm not sure. You know, I've, I watched the series, but, you know, it, it showed in certain games. But what's the actual problem? I don't know. Can they fix it? I don't know. You know, that, that's the weird thing there. But they had the pieces. They were built well. You know, they needed a couple, you know, fixer-upper spots here, like the like the uh, their, uh, small four spot. Was they addressed this off season with Max Struess, um, but all in all, though, I just don't trust Mitchell. I don't. Even when Utah Jazz days, you know, which was not too long ago, Mitchell will go for 35, 40, and I still be like, Ugh, it's cool. You know, I like he's not scared. Of, he's not scared of the playoff moment. He he's a big time scorer when it matters most. I, I get it. And that Jazz team should have went further too. Having Gobert, having Conley, having Bogdanovich, having Clarkson, but I just don't trust. I just don't trust uh, on, on Mitchell. I really don't. Uh, uh, against other star players, you know, when it really matters most, I don't. I don't trust him. You know, and he has won a series or two for the Jazz, um, and he has. And I say he doesn't play scared at all. You know, and he has accomplished more than the Aaron Fox, especially in the playoffs. But I just trust Fox a little bit more. You know, I want to go with Fox for being the starter. I think it could definitely be that way. But for, for me, you got to show me one more time. Show me one more time that you're a serious team, you're a serious player. I know he won that award for, uh, well, the NBA Honors Award for, what, the most clutches player of the season, something like that. His clutch numbers were off the charge, charts during the fourth quarter. I dig all that. But show me one more time. Show me one more time. You can do what you just did, lead your team, carry carry your, your team to, to that promised land, and next time, be the, be the big dog team like the Warriors. You know, uh, Fox and the Kings were very impressive last year. Everybody was. You know, Herder, Malik Monk, uh, the Murray rookie, uh, uh, the Sabonis. Everyone on that team who got playing time, except for Harrison Barnes and me, really was impressive. <laughs> But uh, Barnes played well too in certain in certain spots. But you know they literally dang near brought the team back. They added a couple more pieces here or there. Chris Duarte trade from the Pacers. They just signed Nerlens Noel yesterday. But I I really wanted them to bring in a better, a more flashier, a more younger three spot and take Harrison Barnes spot. But they resigned Harrison Barnes to a contract to me that was crazy. You know so. Can Fox do it again? Uh, that's, that's up to debate. The West is tough. The West is tough, man. So I want to I want to see Fox do it again. If Fox can do it again, Fox has my 
full trust to be like, okay, cool. You know, they going to run um, next, uh, next season. And Fox can be my starter in this scenario in 2024. But as far as right now, he has more trust in me than Donovan Mitchell does. Uh, you know, first playoff appearance, finally getting there. Fox played great. Just they, you know, they ran to a bus saw. They ran to the more experienced team. And like I said, they had they had a game uh, with Harrison Barnes wide open shot. It was a game six, game seven to, to, to win it, but he he missed it. You know, so I forgot what game it was. But you know, they they've had the Kings and the Fo- and Fox seem like they're legit to me. They really do. They seem like they're a legit squad. I hope they all stay healthy. I hope they all can you know come back this year and do their thing again. But I gotta see it one more time. I got to see it one more time as far as Fox goes. M- Mitchell, like I said, I just don't trust him. I just get a feeling when I see him, I just don't trust him. <laughs> I don't know if it's his phase, if it's game, I'm not sure, but his little weird phase, but I just don't trust him long term. I really don't. So for me, I'm going to go with Trey uh, on the potential that they get Pascal Siakam. Number two, the, the bench, I'm going to go with De'Aaron Fox. I think, you know, he's on a rise. And um, I think he's going to do it one more time and show me that, okay, show us, show the NBA community that he can do it again, that he that he's really, uh, he's finally arrived now. And I think Mitchell and, and the Cavs will be a stagnant team once again. Have great moments, look dominant in certain moments. But I think there's a small chance that they could trade Darius Garland, either the trade deadline or next offseason. I could see them trading Jerry Allen at the trade deadline or next offseason to give it a different look, to, to give it a different feel. You know, would, would it be the right thing to uh, do? I, I don't know. You know, I like Garland personally more than Mitchell, but I do, I do get why you would keep Mitchell over Garland. Uh, like I said, Mitchell is a flat-out scorer. He can give you some assists. You know, the, the potential of Mitchell still is there, you know, because Mitchell, you look at Mitchell's game, he hasn't been the primary playmaker yet, you know, so that, so that could be reason why his playmaking numbers, his assist numbers aren't quite there. He only averaged about four assists, pushing five. But you know he played with Conley the last couple years with, uh, with the Utah Jazz. Then after that, you know, this last year with the Cavs, he played with Darius Garland, who averaged, you know, upwards of eight assists, seven assists. So, you know, um, no shot at, at Mitchell. I like him a lot. As I said, he's aggressive, great playoffs a, a good playoff score never scared in playoffs but as far as leading the team doing everything you know as far as on the offensive end because on defense none of these guys are really there except for fox you know he's a better two-way player than both of these guys and trey young and and mitchell but as far as just overall feel for the game i i it feel like to me trey young has it down packed is just he has to get the better teammates to execute what he wants to do or and or execute the offense. You know, like I said, I've seen Trey Young be passive and try to get teammates involved. Bob Don Kitt couldn't do it. Herder, well, yeah, Kevin Herder during the time he was there couldn't do it. Hunter couldn't do it. Collins Dangjo couldn't do it. And Clint's not a flat-out scorer. Clint is a dirty work, big man, rebound, you know, all that stuff. He's not a... Give me the ball, I'm going to post up. Give me the ball, I'm going to tee up a little bit, give you 25. And, you know, he, that's not him. You know, he's not he's not a shooter at, 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 uh, at all. He's not in a foul line shooter. You know, so Capella can't give you that. So, for me, I think you surround Trey with more talent. I think you see a different Hawks, a different Trey. Um, as I said, the Kings, they're right there. Show me you can do it again, and I'll give you that ultra respect, okay, uh, Fox got to go up, you know, a, a, a different level or different category. And then Mitchell, I just think they'll be stagnant. I really do. You know, um, you know, the idea, uh, the idea, and I said this for, for example, too, the idea of Donovan Mitchell is, is great, but who would you rather have as a next point guard now seeing a full season? Donovan Mitchell or Jalen Brunson? Brunson fits the offense a lot more, and I think runs a lot better than than Mitchell ever would. You know, Mitchell would have put up great numbers. He 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 would have had the house rocking us at certain moments, same as Brunson did, but in a different way. 
but I just think Mitchell's point guard playmaking needy, you know, uh, uh, awareness isn't quite there like uh, Brunson, like a Trey Young's, like a, you know, Fox. And I just think, you know, he's more of a flat out scorer that needs to be paired with, with a playmaker. But I think it's different with Fox and with, um, and with and with with uh, Trey Young, so that's my personal opinion. You know, I could be off, could be wrong, but that's just how I see it. But that's it for video, guys. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Start bench cut. Trey Young start Fox bench and then cut Donovan Mitchell. Uh, I will see you guys next time.